Alright, welcome back fam. If you're new here, my name's Amy and uh, I dare you to come with me down the 13 steps to hell. sound like we were gonna go down there today huh yeah fuck that shit still early 2021 i take care of my mother nah i'm gonna do part one and then later on i'm gonna go ahead and venture forth i said maybe in the spring and now it's march and i'm like i would like to begin by telling you the story how it was told to me so as folks were settling in the area, they, this is an area most of us know as Woodenville. Um, I don't know if Maltby is its own city. I don't consider it its own city. Am I an asshole? It's okay to say yes. Um, if you're, if you've ever been to Seattle or if you know Seattle, it's just east of that, um, a little northeast of that. And so, a lot of our like Washington cemetery stories have to deal with like miners and shit like that. So you like people claim to see a lot of like the lanterns and shit that people used to use back in the day, you know, just walking through what used to be the way home. You know what I mean? This particular one, the Maltby Cemetery, if you try to Google it, Google and then we'll try to fuck with you a little bit. So more on that later. Um, the Maltby Cemetery is a privately owned cemetery. Most of the folks buried there are the ancestors of those that live in the neighborhood. This is as I was told. And supposedly one of those stories was stories, families found it. <laughs> supposedly one of those families was very wealthy and um, devil worshipers. So they had some kind of like vault or I always consider it like a mausoleum or something right but it was like underground and he had to go down these 13 steps and uh, I was told <laughs> my mom's phone was going off and I was like what is happening I usually film at night and I don't know what's going on with my life right now um, there's so many noises so the idea is that you dare folks to go down those steps and they just have to knock on the door. That's it. And you can go back up the stairs, easy peasy, right? So supposedly when folks go down those stairs, they knock, they, cause the door's locked. It's not for you, it's locked. So they turn to go back up the stairs and instead of seeing stairs, they see into hell and folks have claimed to have lost their damn minds after this shit. Uh, one person claimed to go mute that they couldn't talk to anyone about anything for months afterwards. Um, no, all kinds of shit, but that's the story. You just, you get dared to go down the 13 steps into hell. Okay. Now, as I was doing research, I discovered that apparently my buddy Mikey was like, no, you got to knock on the door, okay? You got to do a little bit more effort, all right? Everybody else was like, no, you just got to go down the stairs. <laughs> the door's locked. It's not for you. <laughs> like, okay. So most folks have claimed that the stairs have been filled in. They've been cemented in. There's no need to go there anymore whatsoever. Um, when I began doing research for this, however many months ago, just at the idea of doing this channel and doing like a ghostly story time, I found this great freaking website that I haven't been able to find these forums this last time when I went to go do like the refresher kind of research and actually take the screenshots and get those receipts and shit. Um, I couldn't find it. But there was someone, um, I think it was last summer that I found it, that claims to have been a friend of someone who lived nearby. And they were like, it's just, it's just, it's very small. 
it's like in the woods or whatever but like I mean there are wood if you've never been to the Pacific Northwest or at least the Seattle area like I mean the woods are just kind of there you know what I mean like we even with all the freaking shit being taken down I used to complain a lot though like how are we still gonna be the evergreen state if they keep tricking fucking trees but then my one of my besties moved to LA and she was like, no, we still have a lot of trees. But um, that's just what it's like. Like um, I lived over on the east side for a little bit in an area called uh, um, Kirkland. And in the summer, I would just like go through these woods just to cut, you know, um, kitty corner basically to go to the grocery store and shit. You know what I mean? So they're just... They're there, um, but it doesn't mean that there aren't, there isn't a neighborhood, you know what I mean? So a lot of people have gone in there at night and claimed to hear like a woman's voice saying, you need to leave now. And it's like, I don't know if like they're meaning that they think it was a ghost, because a lot of people claim that it's, it's more of the feminine variety of ghosts going on there and like little girls and stuff. Um, but I'm pretty sure that was one of the people who lived near, like, like, you, you don't belong here. You didn't, you didn't, you just call, call ahead. So that takes us to what's really going on. Um, supposedly those stairs were never there. They were never there. Like, you're silly. Like, who, who came up with this shit? You go to jail. Five minutes. You think about what you did. I'm pretty sure most, a lot of places have this kind of story. A lot of people are really creeped out by cemeteries. I think they're quiet. They're really fucking quiet. So, I mean, you know, if you just want to get away from your nagging ass family for a minute, I'm just saying. You don't have to be God. So, that one person where I couldn't find it to get the receipts freaking um they claimed to be friends with someone who lived there and that person explained there were never any stairs the idea possibly came from supposedly it's like tiered which I had our house that we had in Ballard in Seattle. We had a tiered backyard. It was fucking great. Dude, there were stairs going up the center. And then we had this like ramp coming down one side that was like grass. I fucking, just, that slip and slide. Whew, my parents wouldn't buy me another one after that summer. So it was great though. So anyway, I digressed again. <laughs> what I do you have no idea because I edit for you so that's supposedly what was really going on that it's just like this tiered kind of small it's very small cemetery and nature's kind of reclaiming it because there are woods that go around it but it's also like this like neighborhood of houses and shit um and one of the main entrance or the main entrance I do that because it doesn't sound like people really use it, um, is on a main drag called Paradise Lake Road. Now, honestly, if you want to do some ghost hunting, there's a lot of fucking accidents that happen on Paradise Lake Road, so I'm just saying. Anyway, what I'm curious about, there are like junked cars and stuff just you know chilling for life <laughs> or something like that but i'm really curious about those cars like are they from the accidents or is it just somebody who lives there and that's like dude you're walking through his backyard can you fuck off this is like i feel like people forget that this is still the pacific northwest that we do still have boonies it's just the cities keep growing <laughs> and you're growing out into the boonies man now there was this one guy let's go ahead and look through these freaking receipts and shit let's look through the receipts where are my pictures there you is legend has it that there is an underground crypt here at multi cemetery that is owned was owned by a family involved in the occult or perhaps satanism the legend tells of a stairway made up of 13 steps that go down into a pit where visions of themselves in hell can be seen Rumors maintain that several teenagers were carried out comatose and that they never did recover. Some witnesses claim that people disappear as they get further down the stairs. So I found this at scaryforkids.com. My girlfriend and I wanted to see this for ourselves. 
you have to go down these 13 steps and then you see a little chair. This guy's got a fucking chair. All right. <laughs> if you sit in the chair, it automatically means that you have sold your soul to the devil. Well, fucking A. Um, it sounds really creepy. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> I was at church with my friend and his pastor said that he went there um, when he was 16 years old and it was the worst experience of his entire life. So I'm pretty sure this is a creepy pasta. You tell me what you think. A group of us headed out to the cemetery in Maltby. We made sure we got there as close to midnight as possible. Like, I've never understood the timing thing. Like, is that just what time you experienced that shit? Like, why would they be tied to, uh, whatever. Anyway, I'm, t I'm going down a rabbit hole. So uh, after about an hour of searching around the dark, we finally found it, the 13 steps. In the moonlight, you couldn't see the bottom. We tried using a flashlight and we still could not see the bottom. It was frightening. And one of the girls was so freaked out that she couldn't even look down into the staircase. I decided I was going to go for it. <laughs> hey! But as I, re as I walked down the first two steps, I started to feel sick. Um, after the next two steps, I felt lightheaded. When I got to the sixth step, I became so cold that I could barely breathe. And I could hear muffled yelling and screaming. I was not going any further. I couldn't even take the next step. And when I turned to climb back up, I could feel something pushing on my back and I couldn't see up to my friends clearly. When I finally reached the top of the staircase, I realized the yelling and screaming was coming from my friends. They were screaming that I had disappeared when I went down. I'm six feet tall. You tall? You tall. I mean, I'm five, four and a half, so I mean, you sound tall. I couldn't... <laughs> I digress, excuse me. I couldn't have been out of sight after having only gone like halfway down. Needless to say, we were all completely freaked out and got out of there as quickly as possible. To this day, every now and then, I dream about the 13 steps that lead down to hell. And I always wake up in a cold sweat. <laughs> okay, let's see, what else? Oops, shit. Um. So here's a story that I found careful. This is from the no sleep. This is from our slash no sleep fam. Here we go. The Maltby Cemetery experience. Um, before I begin sharing my boyfriend's experiences, let me share some local background information. Here we go. So located in Washington state near Seattle, we have a most scary place known as Maltby Cemetery. The cemetery is said to have been built by a satanic family, so they have an eternal resting place. This cemetery was once the location of a staircase with 13 steps, known as the 13 steps to hell, that lead to nowhere. What about the door? Nobody ever mentions the door. Like, who got crafty on my end? Okay. These steps located in the middle of the cemetery started at ground level, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stop. <sighs> okay. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Start at ground level and descend it down under the earth. Story goes that it was an entrance to the tomb to nowhere. Entrance to the tomb of a locally wealthy family. It is said that when a person walks down these stairs, they wouldn't be able to hear anything. At the bottom, if you turned around, you would be confronted by a vision of hell that would drive you insane. So, um... <laughs> at uh, some that have ventured down the steps have vanished while others have barely made it out alive these steps were bulldozed or filled in with concrete between the early 1960s and 1992 there are se severe severe no trespassing 
um, limitations on the cemetery. There is a rumor of illegal late night expeditions of kids with shovels hoping to unearth the 13 steps to hell. Is somebody yelling at my mother? <laughs> Bitch! So now we have a different experience. I'm guessing this is his, the boyfriend's actual experience. Hanging with my friends, Mike, Ted, and Bruce. Ted. Mm -hmm. Mike had come across a television show regarding Maltby Cemetery. We all decided to test, because, you know, it was probably Halloween or something, right? We all decided to test the cemetery and see what it was all about. We got to the cemetery, and within five minutes, we heard a howling in the background. It seemed about fitting for the night and location. We continued walking. I felt a cold area. It was warm out that night. <laughs> You're silly. I had all the guys come and feel the area to see if they felt it. Sure, they all experienced the coldness. Thanks, Gloss. We continued on the path. The path kept getting more and more blocked off by fallen trees and branches. They're called the woods. Um, we got to the top of the hill and started looking at the gravestones. Something told me to go to the left. All of a sudden, Mike hears a female voice say, leave, leave now. After that, we left. Later, Ted, who had been recording the entire adventure on his phone, played the recording back. We all heard the same thing, leave. Um, she probably lived like right there. That was an actual woman saying, the fuck out of here. It's not for you. My grandma's in there, asshole. <laughs> Is it this? Ah, it's ghostlyactivities.com. That's where I got a good amount of information. Thanks. Um, a forest surrounds the Maltby Cemetery, so it's going to be dark and spooky at night. They also talked about how it's basically a waste of energy if you're like honestly trying to go there to like get any kind of EVP or any kind of that kind of experience and you're trying to record shit like there's just too much noise going on you have Paradise Lake Road which can be busy as fuck you have freaking you know people living nearby <laughs> so you have like life happening around and shit right most of the graves are family plots that go back to the first settlers in the area. The grounds are well maintained and most of all the old headstones have been replaced with new ones. The cemetery is still used for burials. So here's that information. There is a groundskeeper. He lives there. And when I was told about this story, they supposedly were having cops like park by one of the spots that most people tend to try to sneak into to try to deter them because it's so fucking popular around that like, it's like, come on, it's a privately owned cemetery. It's very small. There's like not actually much going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you are legit and you would like to do some investigations, just call ahead. That's really all you have to do. Um, this ghostly activities, uh, right? Isn't that what it was? Uh, dot com, uh, article has a lot of information for being able to get there as well as the real directions because that's how I found out that Google it's set to lead you astray because it, people are fucking shit up yo like one of these guys here let's let's get into the forums and the people and their little stories that they claim to be happening here um so Daniel claimed that in 1981, a couple high school friends and I went to the cemetery late at night and it was a very clear spring night and we walked into the cemetery with flashlights and I remember very vividly the further we went in looking at the headstones, the more misty and foggy it got until we eventually turned back and went back to the car. We sat there for a while drinking beer, got a, you know, I like to groom I like to pet the hair I love this wig okay anyway sorry I digressed again <laughs> no I don't have ADD okay moving on um got back to the car sat there for a little while drink beer smoke a little weed and then suddenly there was a big 
bang on the back of my car. And when we looked to see if someone was there, there was no sign of anyone. We decided to get out of there quick, started the car, started drive out of there, then the car died. When I tried to restart it, it wouldn't start. I tried over and over again to restart it for about five minutes when it finally started. We drove out of there and never went back. It was a very surreal experience and quite scary. Been there, done that. Uh, worked with a guy who claimed that he was a devil worshiper. He said that the DWs met there every Halloween night. He told me that the day before Halloween, so myself and three friends decided to go see if he was full of it. I went armed as did my friends. Why? Okay. Um, when we got there, there were indeed some wackos there who were standing around a fire. I wa we watched from a distance, unseen, as they sacrificed several animals. Having grown tired of watching them and listening to them chant gibberish, I decided to fire several shots in the air. Okay, so when you say armed, you really mean a gun. What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, moving on. They all scattered like roaches. We went to their fire and doused it. We stayed there for another 15 minutes just listening and heard nothing. Saw nothing spooky. Um, then they said, don't believe all the BS stories. Stories are bread. Well, okay, now you're just... He and his friend have been drinking and smoking weed, so... Which, yeah, okay, fine. Oh, Maltby Boo Bull. That was supposedly 1992. So, summer. And I think... This, she talks about this in a couple of different spots. So my friends were drink, drunk driving out there. Um, I think she means Paradise Lake Road. I'm not sure who the driver was. An older male is all I know. Lori was 14, Teresa was 16. They wrecked into a tree near the entrance. Lori was thrown from the back seat through the windshield and again back into the back seat. Lori died right there. Teresa was in shock, fixed Lori's hair and face as good as she could, believing story was Lori, sorry, was still alive. She walked miles and miles until she got to a house and knocked on the door, asking to use her phone. The lady who lived there This now now it gets me. Miles and miles. Maybe it just felt like miles and miles. Um, till she got to the house, knocked on the phone, asked, da, 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 da. lady invited her in and asked her, like, asked her big, f asked if her big friend was going, what? I think autocorrect kind of got a hold of Summer with this shit. Um, asking if her friend was going to come in and um, Teresa was alone. She believes to this day that it was Lori who was with her. Teresa herself told me what happened. Both she and Lori were great friends. G-Man says, I went there with um, a tough guy with some friends. As soon as we walked through the gate, it got cold and felt like we were being watched. Yeah, because people live around there. Um, we walked around for a few minutes and looked down the 13 stairs. As we started to walk down, a bright light above us came on and a woman's voice told us to leave. Because it's not for you. Uh, we walked, almost ran back to our car. As we took off, my car accelerated without me touching the gas pedal. We were heading to the corner when I turned off the key before we wrecked in the corner. There are evil spirits there. So there's Paradise Lake Road has like this like sharp curve thing and that's apparently where a lot of accidents do happen. Walk the trail on the side of that road to the cemetery. There are tons of old cars wrecked into the side of the hill. It's very eerie. Wrecked into, we're gonna have to see for ourselves on that one. Oopsie, that's not what I meant to do. All right, Joe says there are 13 steps that went down toward Paradise Lake Road into the woods and legend says you couldn't walk down to the bottom. Okay. I heard a story of a guy bounced a ball down the steps and it vanished. Also, you would freeze at the 12th step. My friend and I went there and he asked about the cemetery to the neighbors. There are houses surrounding it. 
as well said, booby traps. Um, but nobody knew anything. The steps are no longer there. It was 1990 or so last time we were there. I felt no presence except the feeling I was being watched. Most graves were early 1900s, but remember one from 1960s. It's a very small place. Um, it's called the 13 Steps to Hell. I went there on Halloween when the stairs were still there and the door was cemented shut. Um, Alyssa claims I was in a car accident today at Maltby Cemetery. My car lost power going into the turn. As I come out of the turn now, about 30 feet from the front of the pillars, there, I want to, I, I'm guessing she means, what the, okay. I'm guessing like they're like stone, you know, things at the gates. Um, what? I lost my place. All of a sudden the gar, the gar, the gar. We drive gars now, like a motherfucker. The car began jerking uncontrollably. I was trying to control it, but my car swerved around the corner. I then felt a presence in the car as though someone was with me. Very eerie. There's like three E's in a Y. Um, I then glance over for a second and see a figure of a woman. My eyes fly back to the road and my car is going off the side of the road. Now foggy images in front of my car. I smashed into the tree, slamming on my brakes, freaking out, searching for my phone that was supposed to be in my purse. I hear a woman talking, scared the shit out of me. Um, I began having a full-blown anxiety attack. I called a tow truck. He asked me if I saw anything weird, saying he has heard of accidents here for years, all claiming to have seen something. Hands down, scariest night of my life. After seeing this woman and watching my car uncontrollably fly towards trees, I watched my life flash before my eyes. A woman's cackling and my son's smiling face. I was alone driving home from work. So I'm guessing that was like, what, the foggy images or something? I have a neck injury in this as my neck flew forward and smacked on my steering wheel. And up again on the visor. So I'm like, like, does she mean like her head or whatever? Cause like, I'm picturing like her, like getting way up and like, woo, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I shouldn't make, like, I should, I'm sorry, but like, I'm trying, just Looney tunes it, I'm sorry. And it's the only way that my brain can freaking make any kind of sense of this, but anyway. All right, fam, so there you have it. There's the Maltby Cemetery experience and the 13 Steps to Hell, part two. We will be going there. Um, it does seem like it's really small. I love the pictures for it. Seems nice and simple and very Pacific Northwest. It's just so freaking chill up here. I love it. Um, the weather and nature, the older I get, is trying to kill me. But, you know, whatever. Gotta love convergent zones and air pressure. Do you know that recently the... Uh, Aurora Borealis was supposedly like going down pr like pretty low and you know good old Pacific Northwest clouds nothing but clouds <laughs> I love clouds but that was some shit <laughs> all right I will see you next time you take care be safe stay safe whatever that looks like for you whatever that means it's different for all of us and uh yeah, I'll see you later.